All right, guys, so we're back with Project 7-3 Excursion here. As you may see, we've got all four wheels off again, and that would be because doing a lift kit on it. Um, ordered a Rough Country 3-inch lift kit for it. I know everyone's got their opinion about Rough Country, but to be honest, no matter what you say, they are affordable and honestly decent lifts. I've done a couple of Rough Countries, and without spending uh you know over ten thousand dollars on a truck that's not even worth that much money it is a great lift kit uh to put on so got started on that i'm gonna give you guys a little update before i get too far here but got these old leaves out never had to use a torch or anything which is shocking um so got the old leaves out uh i did have to cut one of the u-bolts and i'm gonna end up having to get it out of there but got the track bar off. You're gonna want to take the track bar off if you're leveling, lifting, or else you're, it's going to be a nightmare trying to get this axle aligned and where you need it to be to get those U-bolts in and everything. So, and anyways, with this lift kit, it comes with a new track bar, so it works out. Disconnect the drive shaft, took off the sway bar, took off pretty much anything that will limit me from moving around this axle. Um, I'm getting new brake lines, obviously in the process of just messing with it, this just disintegrated. That's what's leaking, if you're wondering, so I'm just going to let that all leak out, probably. Uh, I'm going to get new brake lines for it. These aren't really too tight, and even if they are, it's not an issue, because again, I'm getting a new brake line for it. Um, so I got all the hardware box, all the shocks, in one leaf spring. <laughs> so what I do today, I put on the one leaf spring that they got to me this weekend. So I've got this in, center bolt aligned, U-bolt snug, leaves tight, and I know I'm going to have to loosen those U-bolts again once I get the leaf for that side. I just want to get it in place and on the centering pin so that overnight it won't move or, you know, whatever. I just want to get it up there for now. I think I really kicked my butt doing it all by myself, um, but we're getting there. And just a heads up, to get this front leaf bolt out, you're going to have to remove this. You see um, condenser mount to get that bolt all the way out. There are very long bolts. So let's give you a reference. That's how long it is. So yeah, um, gonna be waiting for the other leaf spring. This is the new track bar. Gotta get the bushings pressed in it. All the shocks over there. Blocks, U bolts. I'm gonna get. get uh, you giving you updates of what I'm gonna be putting on that way you'll see everything that the kit came with. So yeah, I'm gonna keep you guys updated. I'm just kind of exhausted from that. Hopefully next time I record, I'll be in a little better bit of a, a little more energy to give you guys an update. So stay tuned. All right, so a little update on the lift kit here. Um, I think last time, I'm not sure if I showed you, but I had the new leaf and I put this side in. If not, well, you obviously see it now. But I got both, the front is pretty much done uh, with the lift. Uh, kind of difficult doing it by myself. It's obviously why I can't really record it. Like, me actually putting it on. Um, but I got the leaf on. The best tip I could get with getting the leaves on is drop that axle as low as possible. And it just makes it so you could get that leaf in there and have plenty of room to mess with it. Uh, I would shove it up forward first, get that bolt in it. Once that bolt's in it, I would loosen this top nut so that this bracket can go back and forth to where you need it. Move it to where it needs to be, then slide this bolt in, tighten, and tighten that one. It's the best way, in my, my opinion, the easiest way. Uh, and I just got it set up with that center pin. Uh, and after that, it's pretty self-explanatory. Get those U-bolts in, tighten those down. Uh, track bar, I got the track bar in. Best advice for the track bar, just the way I did it, yeah, those are hammer marks, big deal, paint over it. Uh, kind of hard to move that track bar around when it's in there because the bushings are so tight to the brackets. But I, what I did is I got that far side in, bolt in, and then what I noticed is that the hole's still way back here. And to get it as close as possible to where the bolt needs to go through, I would jack, I put the floor jack right where it is right now, and jack this one side up as far as possible. <laughs> really, as far as you're willing to go. 
or just watch the track bar reel and see you know you, you'll be able to see like oh is it close enough well, jack did as far up as i could go got this in and it was close enough to where i could put the bolt in and that's how i did that um because this kit's not big enough to have a drop track bar mount then after that yeah again self-explanatory got the shocks in they look it's definitely starting to wake up the truck a little bit i know this whole phase we're not going to be painting the, the the frame and the suspension but if you look at that truck um believe me it'll get done and it'll look really nice in the end it's just the first phase of everything with this truck uh it'll definitely look cool yeah. so yeah oh and tip so to get on the, on this side this is the most difficult side to get this bolt out when you're taking the old leaves out i'm not sure if i mentioned this the track the the, the drive shaft has to be dropped to get it all the way out so i, I disconnect it from the transfer case and that's how you'll push this bolt all the way out they're very long bolts and with the fronts both sides in order to get those out because they're also very long um you need to take these condenser mounts off which is very easy the condenser won't move with the mount so don't worry about that so yeah everything else pretty self-explanatory got everything on there for the front uh tomorrow i'll probably get the i've got a dual steering stabilizer kit i'm gonna put on it and move right on to the rear which will hopefully be a lot easier in the front which the front wasn't even that bad I'm telling you once you do it like a this is like a nine ten inch lift once you do that <laughs> any of the other lifts seem pretty easy so definitely gonna keep you guys updated so stay tuned with the rest and definitely stay tuned for the end i think you guys are gonna like the end result all right guys so i'm sorry i'm so well i'm sorry but i'm sorry that i did not get to show you the full disassembly uh of the rear axle with the lift kit it wasn't very entertaining to be honest a little bit self-explanatory but i understand for some people it may not be uh, i've been there before too but i'll show you guys don't mind the wheels yet i'll show you that soon but uh to do it to give you a quick rundown of what i did uh, immediately went to, well, you know, you gotta support the, the frame on jack stands and, uh, immediately just went for cutting the U-bolts, you know, it's, it wasn't worth my time tr even trying to get those nuts off and I tried with an impact for a little bit and they weren't coming off, so cut off all the U-bolts. Uh, did need, you, you will need to disconnect that drive shaft or else when you take the U-bolts out, the axles just want to go straight down like that and you're not gonna be able to get the angle you need to put those blocks in. So once the U-bolts are off, the shocks are off too. You gotta take the shocks off. And I was replacing them anyways. And drive shafts down. You gotta lower the axle low enough to be able to get those U those new blocks in. You put the blocks under the factory blocks. Large end of the block towards the rear. Do not forget that. I've forgotten that multiple times. And it's really frustrating because then you gotta take it back apart and flip the blocks. But after you do that, you would need to align the uh, little dowels on the blocks uh, with the axle and the in the factory block. So to do that, you pretty much manhandle it. I did this by myself with one floor jack. Uh, push the diff whatever way you need to go. Once you get one block lined, I'd put that U-bolt in, snug it up a little bit, then get the other side lined up, uh, and you're good to go. Tighten those U-bolts up. I think torque spec is 80 foot pounds and uh drive shaft back on and everything but I'll show you guys we got the rear shocks up there yes i did not go through with painting everything the first go around with this thing but just having the fresh stuff in it makes it look so much better uh honestly so completely finished the lift kit on this and i would also like to show you i won't reveal the whole thing yet put steering stabilizers on it uh went through paid the extra hundred dollars because i figured why not you know it's a hundred dollars and it just makes it look pretty clean up front and again more fresh parts i add to it the better this thing looks uh because it looked pretty dead when i first bought it and that's a very simple process putting these on too all this stuff's from rough country um we just put these brackets on the end. They attach to the factory U-bolts. I mean, not the factory, sorry. The U-bolts that they give you with the lift kit. But, you know, if you had factory U-bolts. Uh, and then there's a bracket up there that's held in by U-bolts. Pretty simple process. But in these on, but I did want to show you that went through with the steering stabilizers. Got them on. So you see we got our new shocks up there as well. 
leaf springs, shocks. All right, also got new brake lines. Just these lines, not all of them, or I should say brake hose. Um, and it came with a new vacuum line too, which is very nice. The other ones were just so rotted and gross. It felt um, still rotting them, to be honest. So, two shocks, and again, new brake lines. I'm waiting to get my chip before I put this inner liner in, just because it's so easy access to unbolt that right there. But now I'll just give you guys the full kind of review of it. I did put, I had to put 14 wides on it that I had already. Just, it just makes it look so, so, so tough. But, I mean, definitely looks way different than when I first, first bought it. I'll put a picture in quickly. I know the headlights are different. I'll get to that in a second as well. But, you know, from the back, the three inch lift, I gotta say, is perfect for what I was going for. It's actually a little taller than I thought for three inches. I thought it was just gonna be a little baby lift, but you know, definitely way higher up. It is on 35s, which probably brought it up a little more, but just can't get over how much better this thing looks. It looks pretty good uh never thought it would look it would actually look this good with the amount of work i put into it i mean i've done a lot but not a crazy amount definitely looks really really clean i cleaned it up you know that next would definitely be paint correction on this thing if it, if it were able to shine again like it, this fender shines that would be one clean truck but next Today I went ahead and I put the 05 headlights in. Did the conversion, you gotta trim and all and get a bunch of adapters. And I put LED bulbs in, so I'll turn those on. Show you how those look with it. So yeah, it definitely just looks way cleaner and better, more updated, so. Yeah, guys, um, I'm going to close it out here for the lift kit video. I'm gonna, really going to try to work on maybe getting someone else to record me doing this stuff because it's hard doing it with your dirty hands, try to take a video. It's just kind of difficult. That's why most of the shots you see are when I'm done doing it. It's just not easy doing, but see steering stabilizers on there. and yeah let me know if you guys are excited for this thing or as excited as i am because i think it looks pretty good and a result so stay tuned for more videos with this no we're near done with it uh yeah so thank you for thank you guys for watching stay tuned for more 7-3 videos